This book is called Skippy John Jones Class Action. It's written by Judy Schachner. Judy Schachner is from Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, about halfway between Philadelphia and Wilmington, Delaware, and close to a wonderful uh, place named Mud Puppy. Um, and her main character is Skippy John Jones, who's very popular. She also has just recently introduced Stretchy McCansom, and she's a person who loves being able to do literature for young readers. If you have not yet met Skippy John Jones, he is a Siamese cat who sort of thinks he is and definitely wants to be a Chihuahua. You can imagine this causes some problems. Because of his interest in Chihuahuas, there is a bit of what people call Spanglish in this book. A few Spanish words mixed in with English words. You will catch on very quickly. Skippy John Jones was just dying to go to school. And nobody, not even his mama, was going to stop him. But she did, by the scruff of his neck. School is for the dogs, stated Mama Junebug Jones emphatically. They're unruly and drooly, she added dramatically. Just listen to that barking. Those hounds sound ferocious. Plus, a bus full of dog breath would smell so atrocious. Good golly, Pop Lolly, it's such a no-brainer. If there is a good dog, it's because of its trainer. His mama gently nudged her nugget into his room. Then she added, Your Skippy John Jones, a smart Siamese cat. Take a look in the mirror if you don't believe that. He looks in the mirror every day, said his sisters, Jezebel, Jillyboo, and Jujubee. But all he sees are chihuahuas. Oof, oof, barked Jujubee. After his family left him to think, the chihuahua did exactly what his mama suggested. But not before he bounced around his room with some books. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I don't get the fuss. It's not like a pigeon is driving the bus. Then he climbed up his sister's kitty condo ladder for a peekaboo in the mirror. Holy Julio, squealed the kitty boy. How many chihuahuas am I? He wondered out loud. Then he took a deep breath, and using his very best Spanish accent, he answered, As many as your head can handle, hombre. And quicker than you can say, the cat in the hat never did that. The kitty boy tossed his mask and his cape and a bright yellow banana into his mochila. Then, as he buttoned up his red plaid shirt, he began to sing in a muy, muy soft voice. Oh, my name is Kipito Fresquito, and I'm off to the school for perritos. Because I've got a good hunch that I'm going to have lunch with a grande old bunch of puchitos. Just across the hall, Mama Junebug Jones and the girls were doing a little homework of their own. Listen here, messy missies, said Mama. How are you supposed to clean your kitty condo without your ladder? Skippy John has it, said the sisters. What for? asked Mama. So he can see the chihuahua in the mirror? The chihuahua, however, was already in his closet, boarding a bus for school. But the kitty boy wasn't the only chihuahua on board. His old amigos, los chimichangos, we're going to school, too. Thank dog you made it, dude, exclaimed Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. See, si, Skipito, panted Poquito Tito, the smallest of the small ones. We need your help con el bulito. 
Without a doubt it all, declared El Scipito. But why do you need my help with the bully? Because he is a perro mesquino, declared Don Diego, who barrenas around the escuela in a tazalita. He spins around the school in a tiny teacup, exclaimed the kitty boy in shock. See, si, dude, added Don Diego, he growls and howls and wears a suerte de lana tambien. Not the wool sweater, said Skipito. Uh-huh, agreed Poquito Tito, trembling. He is a woolly bully. There wasn't a dog worth his biscuits who didn't fear the woolly bully. So it wasn't a surprise when a potent puff of panic poofed out the gatito's tail. And all that puffiness inspired the puchitos to sing. Oh, puffy, puffu, puffito. We know you can do it, scapito. Let's unravel his sweater and knit something better. We'll show that old woolly bolito. But there was no turning back now. The doggies had arrived at school. A moment later, the principal, a poodle with very high standards, appeared with a bucket of balls and a whistle. First, she blew. <sniffs> then she threw. Go fetch, barked Mrs. Begalot. Then every dog, big and small, chased the ball down the hall and into the classrooms, except for Skippito. He got carried along by the river of rovers and landed in art class, where he drew his best ever double doggy doodle. I've never seen a pup do that before, said Mrs. Houndler, the art teacher. Then he trotted over to the music room and bayed like a beagle for the canine chorus. <coughs> Bow wow, woofed Mr. Muzzletuff. What a pair of ears! After music came math, where Skippy stunned Mrs. McDrooler with his counting skills. Two, three, uh, five, seven, eleven. At the bell, the amigos followed their noses into the library. Not even a bowl full of frijoles smelled as delicious as the scent of books waiting to be read. I lick libros, declared El Scipito Fresquito, the great Riderito. I like books, too, whispered Leonora Lapsitter, the librarian, from behind the bookcase. The kitty boy was the last to leave the library, so he had to race right over to French class with Monsieur Fouze. Can you say cheese? asked the teacher. Oui, oui, said the poodles. Fromage. Si, si, said Skipito, queso. Queso cabeza, shouted the chimichangas from the rear of the room. I'm not a cheesehead, chimichangas, chuckled the gatito. I'm a chihuahua. The poodles were tickled pink to have Los Puchitos in class with them, and Los Puchitos wanted to share what they had learned with their amigo. So the poopies sang... Come si, come sa, come sito. We have something to tell you, Scapito. When the poodles say we, oui, they really mean si. So don't look for a red hydrantito. After French, los muchachos took a pass on obedience class, deciding instead to nap inside the warm case with the golden trophies. I'm not good at following rules, confessed the kitty boy. What dog is, dude, quipped Don Diego. But just then, the gatito heard a gut-gurgling growl that shook the entire escuela, perhaps the whole planeta. Holy heartburn, hollered Scapito. Was that my tummy? No, that is the bellow of the woolly bolito, said Poquito Tito with Chiverito. 
The gruesome grumble grew louder, and along with it came the rattle and plank of the terrible Tassilita. It was spinning wildly right under his nose, circling like a polka-dotted shark. Andele, declared Don Diego. Get out your duds, dude. But Scapito was too frozen with fear to unpack his mochila, so his amigos did it for him, helping to change their chico into El Scapito Fresquito, complete with mask, cape, and banana. Where the plantano, dude? asked Pinto Lito. It's my snackito, replied the gatito. Will you share it with me and Tito? Yes, indeed, agreed Scapito. Then a woof chuckle luck a luck a woof chuckle luck a luck a Every doggy leaped out of the case and latched onto the turbocharged Taza. This caused the cup to spin wildly out of control. Some of the chicos just hanging on by a tail. Oh, estoy mariado, cried Scapito. <laughs> you are not dizzy, dude. You're green yipped the doggies. The whirling dervish of a dog-filled teacup cut a mean path of destruction past the principal's office and spun straight on into the lunch bunch like a bowling ball. Strikeito! shouted the Buchitos. And strike it did. Smash, crackle, and pop! The twirling tassilita crashed right into a table and broke apart, exposing the ferocious fuzzy for what he really was, a teeny, tiny, itsy-bitty, wool-wearing teacup chihuahua. Dude, declared Skipito, you're no bigger than a baguito. But the baguito's only reply was a gut-girdling growl greater than the hounds had ever heard before. Is that your tummy? asked Skipito. Si, replied the bulito. Tengo mucho hombre. I am hungry too, agreed the gatito. But you can have my plantano. This act of kindness made the chimichangos pull out their jump rope right in the middle of the mess. Peanut butter and belly buttons Chunky cherry pits. The woolly bully's taza has broken into bits. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle, waggle. Jelly on the toast. He's not a woolly bully. He's just hungrier than most. Just then, Mrs. Begelon stomped into the lunchroom. I smell a cat, she bellowed. That cat had better scat. Then out came the whistle. First she blew, and then she threw a bright yellow ball down the hall, which every dog, big and small, began to chase. Except for Skipito. He wasn't chasing the ball. He was running for his life. First Skippy tripped, then he slipped on the banana peel and slid straight out of his closet and back into the arms of his Mama Junebug Jones. What in the woolly white willies have you been up to, Mr. Whistle Whiskers? asked Mama. Oh, he broke my teacup, whined Chilly Boo, and he ate my banana, complained Jezebel. Oh, that's because he went to school with the Chihuahuas, explained Jujubee. Later that night, after every fuzzy fell asleep, the kitty boy was good for one. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones, and I couldn't say it better. A dog is not a bully, just because he wears a sweater. <laughs> then he bounced over to his mama and gave her a beso, a kiss she felt straight through the liver quilt. Good night, little dipper said the very sleepy mama. Good night, mama, said the very sleepy kitten. The 
end. Skippy John Jones is so famous and so well liked by young readers, he has his very own website, skippyjohnjones.com. This Skippy John Jones adventure has been Skippy John Jones Class Action, written and illustrated by Judy Shackner.